Crimson Trace now offers a complete line of electronic sights, ranging from a fixed magnification battle sight to reflex sights with the latest power management features, purpose-built and versatile. Find yours at crimsontrace.com. He rode out of Louisiana territory, and with his gun slung low and his microphone held high, he brought truth to a savage land, and the legend grew, Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Well, speaking of the West, we are in the West. Yes, we're, we are. We're in Colorado. Tom Gresham here, or Ryan Gresham is joining us right now. We're at the Centennial Gun Club. It's a fabulous country club, shooting range. Uh, gun store, and they're having their fall firearms festival here. Lots of folks here. And a big part of this is this is, yeah, it's to introduce people to a shooting and to show people a lot of guns and all that. But it's also a fundraiser. It's a fundraiser. So we thought we'd have Gordon come out here and tell us all about it. Gordon Carroll with uh, Arapaho Sheriff's Department, right? That's correct. All right. Thank you so much. And you are the canine training officer? I am the canine instructor for Arapaho County, so I'm in charge of training up all the dogs, getting them uh, ready to go out on the street, and ready to work with their handlers. How long have you been doing uh, canine work? Well, I've been in the sheriff's office for 33 years. I did a year before that with uh, Glendale Police Department, and then I did seven years in the Marine Corps before that. And uh, I've been in canine now for 23 years where I was actually a handler and then trainer. And before that, I came out for about six years as a decoy. We come out as a chew toy to learn the craft. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Oh, oh, getting tased because you have to tase people kind exactly. of thing. Right. 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 All right. We just like to have our dog chew on you for a while. Exactly. Thank right. you very much. How long has the, have law enforcement been using canines? Since the 1800s. No kidding. Yeah. That's correct. Jeez. Yep. I didn't realize that. Yeah, people don't know that. But uh, actually, Rapo County had their first canine in like uh, 1886. Oh, yeah. And wow. We actually have a picture of it. It's really cool. Yeah. What were they for back then? Uh, to find bad guys and same, bite them. Same yeah, thing. Same thing, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hunting dogs. <laughs> what, why are canine units so good? What What's the benefit of using a dog in law enforcement? Well, that's a great question. Uh, the main purpose of a canine in law enforcement is a locating tool. That means to find something, whether it's drugs, bombs, cadavers, arson, huh. uh, because of this incredible or bad nose guys. They have. What's that? Because, because of, of their nose, nose right? That's right. like a million times better than ours. It's so much better, right? And their ears are also better, and people don't know this, but their eyes are actually better. Oh, really? They can see ten times in the dark better than we can. Didn't know that. The only thing is they don't have good depth perception. So okay. after a thing goes out about uh, 20 feet or 20, 25, 30 feet, after that, everything turns uh, flat to them because they don't see 3D at that point. Okay. Huh. So uh, what they look for then is movement. So they catch any kind of movement. If something's perfectly still, it's a little bit tougher. But so that's how we hide from them. That's how you hide from them. Except, and except their nose will never the nose catch you. <laughs> <get you. laughs> They're going to smell you. Yeah. And if we give those announcements, don't come out. Just wait there, okay? Don't worry. You're going to go. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> we actually, you would tell us the story. He says, you know, look, I'm, you're saying, I'm going to send in the dog, and the right. guy won't come out. I'm going to send in the dog. Why are you not coming out? You know the dog's going to find you. He is going to find you. But you know what? People think that they won't. They think if they stick their head in the ground, it's the old ostrich game. <laughs> I can't see you. You can't see me. Well, the dog can see you. And my yeah. dog says ostrich tastes like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. So I know this is a fundraiser, and you guys have to purchase these dogs, right? We do. And the dogs, the prices for dogs these days is insane. Because I know you guys probably are aware of this, but especially right now, the uh, with the states all getting rid of marijuana mm -hmm. laws and letting marijuana come in, which uh, personally I'm just going to tell you is insane. I wish the federal government would do something about that. But uh, the fact it, that because we're in the we're in Colorado, where it, we're in Colorado, legal, we're legal here, here right? right? And it it, it uh, because of that, uh, almost all of the dogs in the area in the states have had to be taken out of service because most dogs, most agencies have what we call dual purpose dogs, and we do. Our dogs are all dual purpose, which means they have two major functions. One is to catch bad guys, mm -hmm. so they can do that by tracking, trailing, area searches, building searches. And then the second service that most of our dogs do is drug detection. We have one dog that does bomb detection, but most of them do drugs. I see where you're going here. Right. So once they're trained up in marijuana, it's very difficult to get them trained off of marijuana. Because you've been telling them, go find the marijuana. Now, you, right. now that's not illegal. Exactly. So oh, wow. now it no longer gives us probable cause oh. to search a vehicle when our dogs hit on it. It would be like if our dog, because people would say, well, it's still a controlled substance. Well, if you have wine in your car and your wife's driving down the road, and I take my dog and I have it sniff around your car, and my dog hits on wine, but he also hits on illegal drugs. 
Should that give me the right to take you and your wife and kids out of the car to search it? No, it shouldn't. Right. right. It doesn't it no longer falls under what we call this the motor really vehicle exception. This has really complicated the world for it, you. It has. So most states have just completely gotten rid of all of their dogs that sniff marijuana. That have oh marijuana. wow! So they're so you're having to buy a lot of new dogs. Right. So what happens is the price for dogs goes through the ceiling because everybody's buying dogs. It's why we train them. Supply and demand. Right. Well, we train them usually ourselves. Like, we train all of our own dogs. But it's still just to get a good quality bloodline dog. Right now, the cost is between six and $10,000 per dog untrained. Per How dog. many dogs do untrained. you need? Well, we have six. Now, I saw this coming a few years ago because we saw what was going on with Colorado. Right. And so what we did, we just let our old dogs go out of service mm -hmm. as they got to age. Okay. So we only have one dog right now that currently still smells marijuana, and we use him for schools and jails, and that works that way. Okay, sure. But finding dogs is just a nightmare. It's just so hard. We have to go, and we, for a long time, tend to go overseas and get them. Okay. So we get them there, but still So that's what the fun dollars. fundraiser's about, to get exactly. you money for dogs. Right. I want to have you, before we run out of time, I want you to address this, because I've heard this before. A police dog saves lives. Talk about that for a second. Our dogs save lives in numerous ways. First, they can help find people who are lost and things like that. So that's always the deal. And I've had several of my dogs throughout the past find missing persons, old people that wandered off, things like that. But really, they save people's lives, both law enforcement, civilian, and the bad guy. Because so many times, would, we might have to get into a shoot, shooting situation with a criminal. Mm -hmm. We don't have to when the dog apprehends them. Yeah. Also, once our dogs apprehend somebody... And I, I can't tell you how many times I've had my dogs latch on to people that had guns. It distracts them. Sure. So it keeps them from shooting me and my cover officers as we come in mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the bad guy. He's too distracted with that dog on his arm or his leg or right. His whatever. Right. And as we come in, we can then get in a position where he can't harm us. Huh. And that saves also the civilians and the and Well, the to, save, to saves the bad guy. You don't have to shoot him. You don't have to shoot him right. in that case. Right? And he's not shooting at you at this right. point. You know, or any innocent bystanders. And it's right. you know, it is distracting when you have a large dog <laughs> really that is. is grabbing you and, and jerking you all over and biting yeah. the snot out of you. You know, it's, exactly it's just, right. What kind of dogs do you use? So we use a one of three dogs. We use German Shepherds, Dutch Shepherds, or Belgian Malinois. And my first dog was a 120 pound German Shepherd, and then I got a 90 pound. Uh, all of my dogs have died of cancer in the line of duty. Never even knew they were sick until the the day they died. They wow. were so driven, Holy cow. so strong. So my first dog was a 120-pound German Shepherd from Czechoslovakia. My next dog was a 90-pound Belgian Malinois. He waited until he was 14. Wow. The longest dog we've ever had in Arapahoe County and the most prolific. Uh, and then my third dog uh, was Thor, and he just died two years ago, and he died of uh, pancreatic cancer. Uh, but he made it until he was eight also. So, so there's a, a difference in longevity there. Usually the Malinois make it longer than the Shepherds do, but not always. Sometimes cancer or something gets them. Also, I just wanted to bring up that Canine Back the Blue is the organization that does our fundraising. Okay. Here. Okay. So they're the ones that do support us and several law enforcement agencies in the area. So for the last 23 years, I have never we have never had to buy one dog for Arapahoe County. Wow. They do right. the fundraising. They do the fundraising and they paid for every dog for us for the last 23 years. Canine so, Back the Blue. Canine Back. Is that blue. specific to this area, or do they it do is. that around the country? No, it's just here. There is a, like, if you look on Facebook or something like that, Canine Back to Blue is on there, but you have to put Canine in front of it, because there's also regular Back to Blue. Things. Sure. Right. Canine, canine being, you know, not C-A, it's actually the K it and the 9. It is the K and the 9, exactly. Right. Thank okay. you. Good. Okay. Good. Exactly Good. right. So they're great. Now, if someone's listening to this, and they're just saying, that's great, I want to I want to donate, can they do that? Can They, they can. They can go on to the Facebook page. Uh, or they can go to their regular website, which is caninebacktoblue.com, okay. and they can donate there. And it's just a great service. So not only do they buy our dogs, but they buy all of our training equipment and a lot of accessories like that. They gotcha. don't do things like pay salaries or anything like that, but they take care of those extra things that we need for agencies. And they do it for us, for Aurora, for Denver, for Greenwood Village, for all kinds of areas of police departments in the area. Well, and I imagine for dogs, I mean, you were kind of alluding to it, you know, you've been in it for 33 years, but... The dog is, can only work for eight or nine or ten or whatever years. Eight so ten years. So you kind of have to have, you know, a continuing a, a, supply. Right. Yeah, yeah. continuing yeah. supply. How, how long is the training process? Training process is about three months for the actual training them up for the dual purpose part. And then they're kind of rookie dogs for their first year. Right? Yeah. We give them, you know, we, 
concentrating on them after that. And then even afterwards, I, I have my handlers do at least three sets of obedience throughout the night. And they try to do at least one discipline, either narcotics or apprehension training during the night, too, just to keep the dog sharp. It's, it's constant. It's constant, right? Yeah, it really yeah. is. Gary, I, I, Gordon, thank you so much. I appreciate you spending some time here. Thank you for what you're doing. Uh, well, thank, thank you, you for again. your service. I mean, uh, Lord knows, it, career law enforcement and Marine and everything else. So we appreciate it very much. Funnest jobs in the world, i got to tell you. Except for maybe your guys. I don't know, <laughs> right? I know but I will say, <laughs> cops have the best stories. Best we stories. Because you yeah. deal with people, you see it all, don't it you? It is strange, and it, and it is fun. And I'm going to tell you just that out here in Colorado, the community is so supportive. Uh, it's just wonderful. It's a great place to work out here. So thank very you guys good. so much. Nice to talk to you. Thanks, Thanks Gordon. Okay. Appreciate it. All right, don't go far. We'll be right back. looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. This land once wild and free, fades now from our memory. But I remember what it was like, what we were like, what we are capable of when we band together. Perhaps more than any other landscape, wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. These natural wonders are where waterfowl begin their cycle of life, where the deer and the antelope play, and where we, the people, gather together to see and share what makes the outdoors so great. The time is now to band together with organizations like Ducks Unlimited. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. Why do hunters and shooters love the Ruger American Rifle? With right-handed and left-handed versions, all-weather, Magnum, Compact, Predator, Ranch, and Scope package options, there's a Ruger American for everyone. Lightweight with an adjustable trigger and minute of angle accuracy, Ruger American Rifles pack in the features. Is the Ruger American the best rifle on the market? See for yourself at your local retailer or at Ruger.com. That's Ruger.com. Back with you here. We are uh, at the, where are we anyway? We're in Centennial, Colorado at the Centennial Gun Club we for the somewhere. Firearms Festival. Yeah. Ryan Gresham is uh, joining me, co-hosting with me this week, which is great. Having a bunch of fun. Now, you cannot call in right now because we're actually doing this on a Saturday and you're going to hear it on Sunday or sometime later. Uh, but it's a chance to run into a bunch of interesting people and find out about a lot of interesting uh, guns because... At the Centennial Gun Club, they have brought in a bunch of different gun companies to right. show their wares. And some of them may be things that you haven't seen at your local gun club. You may have heard of them, you may not have, but they're weird and different. So last night, I was telling you earlier, Ryan, I'm sitting at the, uh, getting my burger, sitting at the bar just by myself. and look over and say, that guy's sitting over there. I bet he's a gun guy. <laughs> he says, I said, are you here for the gun thing? He says, yes, I am. So, Mike, it's my first time to, to meet you. Now, give me your last name. Tell me how to say it right. Did it you? is Degerness. Degerness. Thank you. Yep. All right. Mike Degerness from Gunworks, W-E-R-K-S, Gunworks. That's All right? correct. Thanks All right. for having me. So we started off, our little conversation ended up being like three hours of gun geekery. Indeed. <laughs> Cause it went down the rabbit hole quick, didn't it, you? It, it absolutely <laughs> did, because, I mean, you were proof research. Uh, you've been doing innovative stuff for many, many years in the firearms world. And now doing the gun works thing. So I guess maybe for Ryan, as much as for everybody else, when you people ask you, what is gun works? What do you tell them? Gun works is a company that started a long tradition corporately of building extraordinarily precise rifles geared for civilian long range, big game hunting. Okay. And uh, one of the things that sets gun works apart from many of the other competitors is the fact that we build almost every component of the rifle in-house. 
We have complete production control and engineering control over a lot of the uh, components that other people buy or outsource. Um, but the only thing that we're not building in-house, of course, is triggers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're using trigger tech out of Canada. I've been very, very impressed with those. And then, of course, some of the optics and the barrels. Okay. And, uh, at but this but at you do this complete system. It's not like, okay, we're going to make a rifle, and then you have to go find your scope, and you have to do all... When you get a Gunworks package, you get the whole deal. You get the whole deal. You essentially open that fitted case and have that angel singing moment where this <laughs> thing is waiting to jump into you, your hand. Do you have, do you have a, a little gold light that comes out on people's faces <laughs> as they open the case? It feels like you should. Um, it, that's, that's not necessary because the pure <laughs> radiance from the new owner is oh, like entire, entirely go. adequate. But no, the, the rifle is really truly range ready. It's really truly hunt ready. As soon as it comes out of the box, it's been broken in, it's been sighted in. Um, well, you know, it's interesting. That brings me to the question. You say it's range ready, it's hunt ready. What's the rifle for? What's it all about? Shooting long range if you want to. If okay. you want to. With precision. Yeah. Okay. That's, Good. that's That's the whole thing. Um, the company's, company's byline for many years was Gunworks, a thousand yards out of the box. Okay. And now the new show season banners are Gunworks, 1,400 yards out of the box. Really? Um, our levels of precision have tightened up over the years. Um, there are new and more really interesting calibers available that we're offering that extend that range if one chooses to use it. Right. So long range shooting is one of the areas for, for guns right now that's pretty hot. It People is. People are wanting to go further and, you know, a few years back it's like we want to hit a thousand yards and it's exactly what you're saying. We used to be, oh, I'm going to shoot a thousand yards, a thousand yards, and now people are going. I, I was on a range this week, and we had a variety of people at a media event, and I think we probably had 15 or 20 people hit a target at a mile. Indeed. You know, and that's just that used to be kind of like there's. I've heard about people doing this, but now it's becoming I don't, almost common. Well, it's what, what long range was perhaps five years ago, ELR, extreme long range, mm -hmm. is now really closing up as being popular. You know, mm -hmm. it, unless you're shooting at a mile, unless you're shooting at 2,000 yards, um, a lot of guys are thinking that it's as kind of boring, boring and pedestrian. <laughs> yes. Just 900 but, yards is with your eyes closed. Almost. Indeed. Yeah. It, that's a chip shot for a lot of these guys. Now, your rifles, are people using them for competition shooting as well? They are. Okay. They are. In fact, we, we just introduced a limited run of what we call the fire starter which is purely a competition rifle. It's a chassis gun with a steel barrel, um, a good starter scope. If somebody wanted to start shooting PRS and didn't know where to go, they could come to us and buy a fire starter package and they'd have complete bipod bags, the correct ammo for it, all ready to go. Um, hmm. Now, you know, we talk about making this a long range gun. People go, well, my gun will shoot far. What makes the difference in what you guys are doing. I mean, I know we could get super geeky down the down that hole pretty quickly, but I mean, what are some of the things that make the gun shoot accurate and, and good for long range? Well, that's that there's a whole basket of components and techniques that make that happen. You know, essentially, you have to start out with an action that is essentially bench rest grade. But if you're going to run it as a hunting gun, it can't have the normal bench rest tolerances where you're going to have a couple of grains of sand lock your action up. Right, sure. So what Gunworks is doing to accommodate that is using um, the technology called board and bumps, which is essentially two spots on the bolt. When you close it, those cam tightly, so you essentially have zero, zero tolerances in the fit. But they disengage when you open the bolt to rack it and slide it. So make it still be able to run out in the field. Indeed. Okay. And the action itself has to be concentric, perpendicular, and parallel in all the planes it's, it's supposed true. to be. It has to be true. Um, and that's, you know, certainly what we're doing, both in our steel actions and in our titanium. And, of course, you have to have good barrels. Great barrels. It, it, that's probably one of the core components. And, you know, currently Gunworks is using nothing but proof research for their carbon fiber composite barrels. It works out well since you, that's your barrel. <laughs> it, it's a barrel that I had the original patent on, yes, right. sir. So let's get, let's get uh, people crazy. Um, calibers. Calibers for long range. We all like to argue about preferences. You, do you have some favorites? Do you, what do you guys load? Chamber it in. Depends on what you want to do with it. If you're sure. ring and steel, that opens up you know, all aspects because no longer are you worried about delivered energy and bullet performance and meat. Right. Um, 
there's an awful lot of guys out there that are shooting the six Creedmoor. There's guys sure. that are still, you know, six five Creedmoor. Six five PRC is now coming on like gangbusters. Right. Anytime you've got Hornady's marketing machine behind a cartridge, <laughs> yeah. um, those guys do a great job. And and that ammo is really good. I mean, it's not hand loaded ammo, but it's pretty darn good. It is. It's it's decent over the counter ammo. Right. Now we we tend to fall back on the point that we do it better than anybody else, and that's why Gunworks has our own branded ammunition. Oh. Okay. And we've got you know a complete full line of that. Um, you know, primarily using Burger bullets, both the hunting grade and the uh, the VLD hybrids. Right. Um, it, it does a great job, and it's all part of the system. Our ammunition is matched to our chambers, mm. and that just makes it more precise than any other combination. Now, you mentioned hunting. L the long-range hunting thing is uh, controversial. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you guys were talking about and, it a bit last and, night. And, and, oh, by the way, you also have a, a full long-range shooting school. We do. As well. So... And we talked about this a lot last night, the ethics of long-range hunting as opposed to shooting steel, and that's something you get into there. So how do you address that? The human is probably one of the most critical components in this whole system. And, you know, we, we've all seen the guy that has an extraordinary rifle and he can't make it work. And so when the, uh, uh, the adjustment of the nut behind the butt is in question, we also have an avenue in order to help that. Our four-day uh, shooting school is the equivalent of years of experience. And uh, I've seen Philip Vallejo, our, our retired Marine instructor, he's our lead instructor. He, he can work miracles. Gosh, he did with me. <laughs> so, um, well, and it's also a case of, yeah, you, you may be, have the right gear and get training, but you also have to know when to say, you know what? We have to get closer, or the conditions aren't right. Ryan, or that's whatever exactly it is. right. That's exactly right. And the, and, and the ethics about long-range shooting, and what you don't see on the TV show, long-range pursuit, is the number of animals that are passed on. That's important. And, that's right. We were talking about that today. Where we say we show more of that. Conditions, yeah. conditions, conditions. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and I'll, I'll, I would put to you this: I think that there are more ethical violations done with a 30-30 lever action rifle on running game in the United States than are committed by long-range shooters. Hold that thought. We're going to come back and pick it up when we come on the back side of this. We're talking with uh, Mike Degerness from Gunworks. Check it out, gunworks.com, G-U-N-W-E-R-K-S. That will get you there. And we will be right back with more gun talk. Ryan, Tom, and the Centennial Gun Club. Honey, does this holster make me look fat? The right answers to the tough questions on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15. <laughs> oh, Beto. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Good luck with that. You're gone. Good luck with that one. I think a lot of the, the United States is going to go, no, 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 no we're not doing we're, that. We're done with you. We're talking with uh, Mike Deggerness from Gunworks. And Mike... You guys make all these fabulous rifles, these packages. You take them right out of the box, and they shoot. And what I was amazed at is I was thinking, well, we're talking about 12, 14-pound rifles. You actually start at, like, 6.5-pound rifle. It comes out at 8.5 pounds ready to go hunting, right? Indeed. Okay. But <laughs> That's crazy. last night you are telling me you guys are this technology company, which, by the way, tell people where you are. We're in Cody, Wyoming. Which is a good place to be. It is. I guarantee you. God's country. You are also doing silencers, but... Suppressors, but they're different from what everybody else does. They certainly are. You know, so many of the most popular suppressors on the market right now are modern-day recreations of technology that Hiram Maxim came up with back, you know, 100-plus years ago with the baffle stack inside of a tube. Right. And the engineers at Gunworks spent some time figuring out how to build the best suppressor out of the box. So rather than using an outer tube, we have robotically welded baffles that comprise the bulk of this can. Okay. Um, the correct materials, we're using a, a 17.4 precipitation hardened stainless. Um, less expensive than running titanium, though if you look at our volume and weight and compare them with the other guys, we compare very well, very, very well. I mean, we're within an ounce or two, and decibel reduction is right in there with the best of the best. You've got to have volume to have Vol re reduction of sound. Volume is our friend. Yeah. And the other thing that I've noticed about the Gunworks 6 and 8 suppressors is the human ear has a hard time determining exactly what the decibel reduction is, but we're very aware of what the tone of that can is. Hmm, what does okay. it sound like 
and high pitch, low pitch, that kind of right. thing. Right? Is there a ring with it? You know. Okay. Um, and without that outer tube, what I've noticed about the gunwork suppressors is that the tone is very, very quiet, almost dead. Interesting. And that, that is what appeals to me. Now, yeah. I live and die by Trail Boss. I shoot a lot of dedicated subsonics. Mm -hmm. And what I have noticed with the Gunworks 8 especially is that if you're running a subsonic round, your sound signature is the click of your striker falling and the thud of the bullet impact. You can hear the striker falling. You can, you can hear the striker <laughs> fall. That's, so, when that happens, when someone shoots a gun that's subsonic ammo through a great suppressor, it's like, wait a minute. Yeah, well, I didn't know all this stuff was happening when I shot. That's right. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's going on. It's like the first time you shoot a gun with a very short lock time. Sure. Oh, wow. I didn't actually know that there were things happening that I was waiting for things to happen after I pulled the trigger. After right? you pull Indeed. the trigger. Yeah. Indeed. Now, I'm looking at, here at your website. You have a reducer tunable to caliber? Absolutely. Tell me about that. Everybody that shoots suppressed long enough is going to have carbon buildup and end up sticking a can to his muzzle. Uh, what's beautiful about this is you'll notice there are wrench flats on the rear of that suppressor where you can spin it off and the threaded adapter remains behind on the barrel. Hit it with some croil, vice up your rifle, and you're usually able to, you know, retrieve that adapter very easily. Okay. Now, the mere function that we have adapters, no longer do you have to buy a dedicated half-28 can or 5 ace 24 for different rifles because these suppressors ship with both adapters. Okay. So you can use it not only on your AR-15 with the half-28 threads and install the smaller muzzle reducer in order to extract every decibel reduction yep. point you can, and then you can switch back to 5 ace 24 and put it on your 300 wind mag. Now we're getting gun well, geeky. I know. <laughs> well, and the bottom line is, you know, you're shooting a 223 bullet, a 22 caliber bullet, and you, if you have a 22 can, the hole is small. Mm -hmm. You can shoot a 22 through a 30 caliber can, but the hole is big. It's going to let out more noise. Slightly more, yes. A little bit, right? Indeed. So now you can tune that. That is really cool. Indeed. It's probably the most versatile suppressor system I've ever seen, and I've been looking at them for a lot of decades. Now, tell me about your stocks. So now people, can people buy the stocks separately? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we now have stock works. Uh, our stocks are not just available on the finished rifles, but they are custom-built to order for the gunsmithing community and for the end user, frankly. Because once that stock is done, the only thing you need to install your barrel to action is a torque wrench. Wow. Just drop it right in. Drop Indeed. It right in. And all, all of that information is available at Gunworks, the website? Absolutely. The stocks are on the Stockworks page, and you okay. can configure it to um, and, and literally hundreds or thousands of different configurations. And we haven't even gotten into the optics, which is a whole other story. We'll do, we'll do that another time, because that's like black magic. What you <laughs> yeah. it's Absolutely. Pretty, it's pretty crazy what's going on there. But I'll look. leave you with a teaser. Check oh. out Revic Optics, R-E-V-I-C, Revic Optics. Revic, okay. Revic Optics, very yeah. good. Mike, thank you so much. I appreciate the time. Enjoy the time I got to spend with you last night, and we're going to come out and shoot with you, okay? Sounds good. Very good. Thank All you right. very much, gentlemen. Back in just a minute. Tactical professionals who put their lives on the line every day depend on Surefire. Since 1979, Surefire has designed, machined, and assembled the finest flashlights, weapon-mounted lights, hearing protection, and suppressors right here in the U.S. Surefire, offering a best-in-class warranty and customer service, and used by more military special operations, SWAT teams, and hard-use end-users than any other brand. Surefire, American-built, American-strong. Visit Surefire.com. That's Surefire.com. It's the Bill of Rights, not the Bill of Needs. I'm Alan Gottlieb, founder of the Second Amendment Foundation. When someone says we don't need that kind of gun, remind them the Founding Fathers determined what rights our Constitution should protect. There's a world of difference between rights and needs. It is not the function of government to tell us what we need or what we don't. Certainly no one needs an assault rifle or a Saturday Night Special, or for that matter, no one needs a Corvette with a high-capacity horsepower engine capable of speeds to 150 miles per hour. But in the hands of honest, responsible individuals, we have the right of choice. We have the right to read books others don't like. We have the right to listen to any radio program we choose. We have the right to dress the way we want to. We also have the right to own firearms of our choice. So the next time someone tells you, you don't need something, tell them. It's the Bill of Rights, not the Bill of Needs. Join the Second Amendment Foundation today so that this message and our Bill of Rights might live. Call 425-454-7012. That's 425-454-7012. A 
attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. FN, the world's most battle-proven firearms. You want to reach for history, for greatness. So reach for the FN 5.7, a 5.7 millimeter pistol built with the DNA of over a century of legendary FN firearms. And now, it's within reach at your local firearms dealer. The FN 5.7 is the perfect combination of accuracy and stopping power. FN, the world's most battle-proven firearms. Don't mind me, I'm uh, dropping cartridges on the floor and scrambling around picking them up here because we get to play with not only guns, but ammo and cartridges and bullets, projectiles, bullets as opposed to cartridges, having some fun and looking at something that's really different here. Uh, Robert Fulleron joins us from Smart Nanos and Robert, what are we looking at here? You're looking at molded projectiles. Molded projectiles. Yes. So we vary the material. You can see some of the different densities and different colors there. And so we combine polymers with metal fillers and nanoparticles okay. to give us the extra properties. What's a, what's a nanoparticle? Very small. <laughs> they, 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 uh, great question. Thank the, you. Bullets made from dust. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. A nanoparticle is generally assumed to be 100 nanometers or less in any one dimension. Okay. To put that in perspective, if you were to lay one nanometer wide tubes that would look like straws, you would put 80,000 of them side by side, and it would be the width of one of your hairs. Oh, my gosh. So <laughs> Okay. Okay, my mind can't I, I keep can't, up I with this. It's very <laughs> small. Would... Another way to think about that is, uh, I'll make a baking analogy, because everybody knows this one. If you have a bowl of milk and mm-hmm. you throw some marbles in there, you're not going to change the viscosity. Okay. It's still going to be milk with clumps in it. Now you take that same bowl of milk and you throw in a cup of flour. Sure. What happens? It okay. gets thick. It gets yeah. like paste. And it's the difference there is that your volume is broken up into smaller pieces, so you expose more surface area. Sure. That's okay. the trick. And so what we do here is is we are able to add very small by by volume and by weight of nanoparticles, and it exposes all of that surface area, so you get the great properties depending so, on what you want to do. When we were looking, you're just showing us three different 50 caliber bullets, and they're exact same profile. They look like the same bullet. And what are the different weights of these? So the heaviest one is 1,000 grains. 1,000 grains. Yes, and 570 grains and 400 grains. Okay, and they look like, when you look at them, they're the same bullet. And, Ryan, you were saying previously, basically, the way we changed the weight of a bullet was to make it bigger or smaller. Yeah, I mean, they always have to be the same diameter because if it's a 30 cal right. bullet, it's 30 cal. So if you want a lighter bullet, it's just shorter, generally. It's longer or shorter. Because we think of this as like lead bullets, right, well, or, or all copper we're, bullets. We were locked into thinking in terms of one material, right? Correct. All right, so what you're doing is you're messing with the material. Yes. Okay. So what are these each, each of these made of? So it, it all is a basic polymer with the nanoparticles that we talked about okay. with different metal fillers, gotcha. depending on how heavy you want to make it. Gotcha. So there could be some tungsten, there could be some steel, copper, brass, whatever, it's a cocktail that we get to tailor to exactly what you want it to weigh and okay. what you want it to do. And I'm looking at this tray you brought, a lot of different types of bullets, handgun bullets, rifle bullets. Is this buckshot? That is number four buckshot, yes. No kidding. And that is, those are about 11 grains each. And out of a full choke, 12 gauge at 35 yards, 23 out of the 27 pellets grouped in a dinner plate. Wow. Okay. And so... It can still punch through, so it'll break a it'll break a clay pigeon, right. and use it for skeet. And but there's no lead, so you're not spraying the lead out there anymore. In an area where you can't shoot lead, for instance, right? You know. Now for in the bullets, why would you? It's the whole question is why? What's in it for me? Why? Why would I want to use a bullet with this technology in? For safety, first of all, for safety, it's uh, one, it's lead free. Okay. So we combine safety for both personal and environmental. 
and Shoot, shooting ranges that would be a big deal shooting range so that you can shoot at a steel target and uh, we have dueling trees set up out here at 10 feet so it still flips the tree turns to dust so there's no ricochet there's oh, nothing going around the range frangible. it's frangible those are engineered to be completely frangible okay. okay and we also tried them on the bowling pins and all it did was leave a scuff mark on the bowling pin at about four feet away no kidding so Guys like Dick Abramson, they like their bowling pins are going to last. Right. <laughs> they can do bowling bowling nights. It'll and still knock them over. It'll knock still them over, knock but them over. won't tear them up. Yes. These are engineered bullets. Yes. Yes. Different. So it, it depends on what you want it to do on target, and okay. we can engineer it to that. Now, how do people find out more about you guys? I mean, is this under the Smart Nanos brand? It's NP technology okay and we we're calling our line of bullets omni bullets because they can do a lot of different things okay. omni so bullets. That, that's omni bullets that's where the name comes from and it, it, so they can what we like are requirements okay and so when we get requirements from law enforcement from military from the commercial market can you make it do this right that's when we light up because yeah. we can engineer it for you're, a particular you really are geeky engineer aren't you you yes. really are yes we are <laughs> And proud of it. <laughs> yes. You're, you're, you're those guys. <laughs> yes. yes, we are. Give us something to do and we'll go. You go, they go you send them off into the room, yep. you know, and just kind of slide pizza under the door. You know, <laughs> exactly. And, and, and a lot of caffeine. And eventually they'll come out and go, hey, look what we did. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> wow. So what type of companies do you do this for? Is this for law enforcement or is this for ammunition manufacturers or that's the beauty of it is, it, and we've shown you some of the some of the cases here. So it's compatible with any case on the market. We can crimp them. We cannot crimp them, depending on what somebody wants to do. Uh, compatible with any loading machines. We run them through high-speed loaders. Mm -hmm. One of the problems uh, with 50 cal frangible in particular is that people can't run them through their high-speed loaders. Okay. We can't. Okay. All right. And so, so any ammunition maker, any loader, any case manufacturer, they're, they're all our customer base. How yeah, about okay. individuals who want to hand load? Available, you're going to make bullets available to them? We are close to making that available for people to, to do that, yes. Now, yes. what people are going to ask is, okay, cost, how does this compare to sure. other bullets? Of course. It can be cost comparable. It can be more expensive. It can be less expensive. It, okay. let, let me explain on that. So where lead and copper jacketed lead, it's really in the manufacturing process. That's where the cost is. Lead is cheap and a thin copper jacket, we are driven by the material costs. Sure. The metal filler, the polymer, uh, the molding process, that cost kind of fades into the background. But so the bigger the bullet, so you can imagine the heavier bullet more sure. material. is more expensive. Tungsten's more expensive than steel. Right. And also so, you're affected by the commodity markets, aren't you? Yes. Yes. So we yeah. like the coppers coming back down. <laughs> right. It's helpful. Yes. Everybody's happy about that. And, and it's it, even more than that. We like material fillers that are not volatile in, in price. Right. So you look at steel, nice and Pretty nice steady. flat. Copper up and down. Right. And so it, it becomes a little tungsten's very, very stable as well. So it, the price point is important, but the price stability is actually more important for us. Where, where are you doing this? In Colorado, right here, right here in Colorado. We're actually in Colorado Springs. Very cool. And that's if where our lab is. want to know more about this, how would they find out more about it? Website or anything? Website is np-technology.com. So nancypaul-technology.com, np-technology. Very cool. And Omnibullet. Omnibullet. You can uh -huh. go to omnibullet.com as well. It'll oh, take okay. you to the same website. Yes. <laughs> that will work. This is very interesting. I wish people could see it. It looks different. It's just, it's really It's always fun up. to see new technology out there, you know? It absolutely it's, is. It changes it's, the way we think about ammunition and what could be done. And what's possible. Exactly. Thank you so much. This has been really interesting. I appreciate you coming by. Thank you. All Thank right. you for having me. Take care. All right. Uh, our number is, never mind, because you can't call it anyway, because this is recorded. Yes, so there today's you go. recorded. <laughs> <laughs> but it is uh, Ryan Gresham, it's Tom Gresham with the Centennial Gun Club. We're having a bunch of fun here. Oh, you're reminded, go out and do some shooting. Take somebody with you. We'll be right back in just a couple of minutes. All right, back with you here. Ryan Gresham, Tom Gresham uh, at the Centennial Gun Club. Ryan, you just got back. You spent uh, the whole week in South Carolina looking at, well, cool stuff. Yeah, actually, it was a media event that Palmetto State Armory had a bunch of people come down to 
they wanted to kind of educate us about what they're doing. And, and they're, if, they're bigger, they do more than most of us are aware. Right. And, and you may be familiar with them, but Palmetto State Armory, um, they do a lot of, they have a website where they sell a bunch of stuff and they put out deals and all this kind of stuff. But in a lot of the deals, you go, gosh, how did they do that? That's right. a fantastic been deal. screaming deals. Well, they, because they're smart. And, uh, one of the things they do, they build their own AR-15s and AK-47s and AK variants. Um, and they do it, they're vertically integrated, which means they control a lot of the process. They make the uppers, the lowers, the barrels, and, and a lot of those things that helps them get the cost down. Okay. And the interesting thing about this, besides the, the products and they have good prices or whatever, but I appreciated um, some of their goals, kind of their mission statement, is they'd like to put a gun in the hands of every American. And they want to make that possible through bringing the prices down and cranking out a good product at a good price, you know, and being able to expedite it with uh, the way they do their business e-com-wise. Right. And they do that, they say, it's not a, a selfish thing. I mean, obviously any company needs to be profitable, sure. but it's because of gun rights. Because they're like, actually, I'll tell you what they said. They said, if every single person in the country had a gun, or most people did, it would make a gun buyback impossible. True. That was kind of one of their, their takes. Okay, that's interesting. Um, but we saw, we, we shot a lot of guns. We shot one of their 6.5 Creedmoor ARs out to a mile. Really? Out, out, to, out of an AR? Out of an AR, just on a bipod, on a, a, a bench. You shooting steel targets? Hitting a big steel target out there. Right. And it was amazing. We had... I think 15 or 20 different people hit it a mile um, in this particular afternoon. And, you know, people of various skill levels. In fact, I think one lady had never shot a rifle before. And she was able to hit it a mile. Yeah, amazing. That really is interesting. And what's happened is the technology has got to be so that it's not as difficult. The other part of that is, be, you know, it used to be if you wanted to shoot it a mile, you had to use a 300 Magnum or something like that. Mm -hmm. And... Frankly, the reality is it's easier to do it with a rifle with less recoil. Right. Absolutely. You know, shooting the 6.5 Creedmoor has less recoil. It's easier to put shots on target because you're not worried about it. Well, you're not generally hitting the mile in the first shot, let's be honest. Well, this is true. Even if we It's going to take a number of it, shots. Yeah. If we have it dialed in. We know what we're doing. Some, I mean, I, I admit it, 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 it took me several shots to hit it because sometimes... It may be you, where you go, oh, man, I felt a little off on that one. Right. Or it's the wind, or it's, it's we're right. making, there's so many minor little adjustments that you have to make because, you know, we talk about one MOA. That's an inch at 100 yards. Yeah. Well. That, that's 10 inches at 1,000 yards. It's a, 17, 17 inches 17 at a mile. 17 inches at a mile. So your two MOA, that's three feet. Right. You're mess, you messed up by two MOA, that's three feet. You missed the target. Right. So, yeah, a, a mistake of one inch at 100 yards puts you off at 17 inches yeah. out there. Yeah, Good so we did, we did that, and um, one, of the, one of the companies they bought is Lead Star. They're doing some really neat things. One of the cool guns I shot was a uh, pistol caliber carbine called the Helium. So it's a 9 millimeter rifle, right? but they call it the Helium because it is stupid light. They have carbon fiber this thing. They skeletonize the whole thing. And it's just over four pounds. Just over four pounds for, it's essentially like an AR, but a 9mm right. AR. Right. Just over four pounds. And Unreal. they're doing some other interesting stuff that you can't talk about yet. Not, can't talk about it yet, but some really cool products coming out of their, their Lead Star line of guns. Sounds good. Tell you what, when we come back, we're going to be talking with uh, Wilson Combat. Also going to talk about a new technology and ammunition that's very interesting. And we'll talk about uh, training. Basically training. learning to shoot and what it's like to run a shooting race. We're here at the Centennial Gun Club, just outside of Denver. Tom Gresham, Ryan Gresham, it's Gun Talk. We'll be right back. 